What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well today. I am a very, very simple man. I see Sandtrack, I click on Sandtrack, I enjoy Sandtrack. It's as easy as that. Today we are going to be playing uh, Bergam MX, created by my fellow countryman, Mr. Callum. And uh, he has written in the description of this, this is free on MXB Mods by the way, that this is going to be a perfect track to get your sand practice in before the MXGP of Arnhem, which is the next GP round. Um, I would like to also say that uh, I'm feeling much better today. The pain is definitely still there but nowhere near as severe. We can operate on a more normal basis now. Apologies for uh, being a little bit down in the dumps yesterday and also missing out on the GP at Trentino. It happens, you know, life gets in the way sometimes. You can't be 100% all the time. So thank you very, very much for all the kind messages. And we're almost back. I give it another day or two and we should be back at 100% action. Uh, so I, uh, the track is much longer than I thought we'd be. It kind of just spirals, just keeps going and going and going. So I think trying to run just a solid, fast, consistent lap might prove to be quite challenging. But having a look at the corners, it looks like insides and outsides all seem to be quite doable. You know, they seem to be quite samey. Um, they, they are all hella whooped out. So this is going to be on the pegs, be as light as possible, fight your way through the track. And I'm just going to try and do it a little bit of justice, because I think it deserves some justice. And I always have fun riding sand tracks. So without further ado, let's get into it. For all of you passionate gamers, you can now get 20% off all G Fuel products worldwide by using code LINS at checkout. And for any of you motorheads looking for some new drip or apparel, use code MXPR underscore LINS15, fxrracing.eu to get 15% off. All links and codes are in the description down below. Enjoy the video and drop a cheeky little like and subscribe. Now talking about being better as well, um, it is also worth mentioning that I obviously, I, I don't have uh, my headset on again. It, even though, so, I went to the hospital, I got it all checked out, by the way, because uh, I saw a few people mentioning that it could be like a wisdom tooth related, etc. It's not, it is uh, just an ear infection. Uh, but it's something to do with like the outer ear, so it's not so much inside, it's more just like around, and any sort of pressure against it is quite painful. So I tried wearing my normal headphones earlier and had them on for about 10 minutes, and it just started really, really hurting again. So I've got them off again, and I went back and re watched my video on the sanctuary from yesterday, and the audio has actually seemed fine. So I'm going to do it again. I'm I mean, I've got it all set up on OBS to record through my speakers rather than my headset and it all looks to be going well so far so business as usual outside of that. The only thing that I will say is so my speakers are very very odd and just the way that I've got my desk set up I've not got like a left and a right it's kind of just one over there so all the sounds come in technically from my left side which uh, I, I'm not sure how many of you guys can relate to this I feel like I'm quite unique in this regard but I use audio a lot in this game whether it's like gear shifting like knowing where people are around me but I, I rely on it quite heavily so if i play with slightly altered audio or even worse play with no audio at all like if i've got music blaring for example when i can't hear the engine i kind of lose all of my ability <laughs> it just completely goes out the window and yeah i feel like some people can just sit there listening to the loudest music on the planet and have no issue at all i really really can't i've tried multiple times even if I just want to sit and chill and play the game and just run some laps, you know, maybe get some muscle memory built in and I want to listen to some chilled out music on Spotify at the same time, I, I can't do it. I kind of have to give the game my full focus and, and full attention. Now, it's also worth mentioning um, because I tried, uh, obviously I didn't do the race at Trentino on Monday. However, after the racing was done, I did go and download it and try and spin a couple of laps. I think I might have been playing too much GP bikes over the last three or so days, just in my spare time. Because, my god, anything I do, my front end seems to tuck at the moment. And I think it's just because of having the uh, like the asphalt or tarmac, whatever you want to call it, grip on GP bikes. It's so much different than MX bikes is and dirt-wise. And uh, I'm actually quite thankful for how many people seem to in enjoy the, uh, the GP bikes videos. I'm aware that I am a big noob. I think I'm up to about 13 hours now, as opposed to the four last time I've done a video. I've thoroughly enjoyed the game. I, I, I'm guessing it's just because it's something new for me. You know, I'm not the biggest, uh, not the biggest road bike guy by by any means. I don't follow all of the, the different championships. So Dad absolutely loves it, and I did enjoy my time at uh, in Qatar going and watching it in person. But it's not something that I would like religiously follow. Uh, but I think it's just, it's, I think it's a similar sort of thing as when I play Sledders. Is because it's something that is so foreign and so new to me. I get that much more joy out of learning how to go fast. Uh, it's just little things, you know, like trail braking, changing down through the gearbox at the right time to get the bike pitched in earlier and using all your engine braking to your advantage. And how sometimes as you get on the throttle, the bike will squat a little bit more and can actually help you turn a little bit tighter in some situations. And it, if you've never played it, it's in a similar vein of like MX bikes with the OEM bikes where 
each bike is a little bit different. However, on GP bikes, you haven't just got like the OEM pack, for example. You've got a bunch of different types of bikes made by different people. So you might have modern uh, GP bikes. You then might have some British Superbike pack made by someone else. You might have some old super naked bikes made by another person. So each uh, bike pack and each bike within each bike pack has their own unique characteristics. So it's not just kind of like a one size fits all. Every time that you go onto a new track or you're on a completely different bike, you don't have to like relearn the game in a sense, but you really do have to take the time to learn each bike's characteristics, which is something that I don't feel like I really have to do on MX bikes anymore. And it's like I've played it enough now, I've, I've used the OEM bikes to the point where I can hop on majority of them and still do okay. Obviously some are much more, I guess, viable, a bit more meta than others. But um, yeah, I've just been enjoying my, my time on the game. It's not in, in a sense that because I know where I stand on this game all the time, I'm maybe like two seconds off top of qualifying on any given day. And I go over on that game and then I feel like I run an absolute steamer of a lap over there and I'm six to seven seconds off. And it's like, well, I have to remember I've got a lot less hours than, I, than they might do. But also, I hate losing. <laughs> I'm so competitive. I hate doing poorly. Um, but I did do my first ever race on that game on Saturday, which was actually quite well received on the live stream side of things. So thank you everyone that went and stopped by and watched that. Uh, but uh, I did not get last. That was that was my main goal, was just not to get last. I think I got like second or third to last, but that was out of the people that finished. A lot of people uh, hit the rage quit halfway through or they ran out of fuel, etc. And it's, it's really fun. It's a, it's a much different community slash pace of racing than MX bikes is. It's really hard to explain because you'd think if you're on road bikes that go, you know, 200 miles an hour rather than uh, like 60 miles an hour on these motocross bikes, you'd think that the racing would just be that much faster and that much more intense. But there's a lot of uh, patience and racecraft involved in it. And I think it is because, you know, like you can push the front end too much in turns and wash out or you can get on the throttle too hard out of the corners and slide the back end out. Uh, you can do a little bit of rubbing against each other when it comes to like, like racing or banging bars but if you get a little bit too aggressive then one of you or both of you will crash and i think it's just a different type of community as well i think on average they're a little bit older than, than mx bikes is and they're a bit more i guess like hardcore fans to their their discipline so the racing is like it's second to none and it actually made me put a request in to el Pavoso. apparently well Apparently this is a feature that we have in MX bikes that has been turned off for years now because it just basically was never used correctly and we have the whole like jump start issue at the start of races. Um, so what happened is in, in this race I was doing, um, they you're in a server with everybody, they press start race, you get to spawn in the pit, you then ride out of pit lane and do a sighting lap. You then line up on the grid and you have a little red arrow telling you which grid is yours and you just ride up to it and then there's a little marker to tell you if you're lined up correctly or not. Then when everyone's all lined up, it lets you do a warm-up lap. So you do that, you line up at the grid again. And then without any like going to the pits and going back to the track or server resets or anything, you do a sight and lap, you've done your warm-up lap, and then you get your red you get your red lights, you get your green lights and you go. And it's all one fluent fluid motion. And it feels so much more like immersive than on MX bikes where we just sit in the pits until we hear the clacks and go and we spawn on the gate and we go. I'd love for us to be able to spawn in the pits, go and do a sighting lap, like let's take Supercross for example, like they do in Supercross, they do their sighting lap and then they all ride over to the start gate and line up on their gate and then once everybody's in their correct position then the 15 second board goes out and you go. I think that would be a really really cool addition to MX bikes. Now I wouldn't want it to be the case for every single public lobby that we do because you know that would just prolong the process by a lot and a lot of people just want to be in and out of races as soon as they can do um, but it'd be nice to be a toggleable option apparently it has been there for, for quite some time and it just never got used at all uh, I, some people so other people in the dev chat did uh, mention some of the problems that we could face with that obviously one of them being the reset of the road causing issues sometimes but I think if we just do one lap of sighting, we shouldn't need to reset the track, so that should be okay. But then the other one was, uh, we seem to have a big jump start problem at the moment. Whether it's people leaving a server and rejoining on a new bike, uh, causing there to be jump start issues where it thinks there's two people in one gate. Or just if there's a little bit of uh, like connection issues and someone 
uh, lags for a split second and the game thinks that they've gone through the start gate. There's a, there's a lot of issues that need to be, uh, I guess, ironed out for the time being before we can implement it. But that's not your guys' fault. Would you think that'd be like cool if you can spawn in the pit area on a track? Everyone go out onto the track at the same time. You haven't necessarily got to go and set a heater or go race pace. You know, you can just study the track, see what line you want to take on your opening lap, maybe, and then you all kind of finish your lap right over to the start gate, line up manually, like get get to your gate and pick it and line up in it, and uh, go from there. I think it'd just be a really cool and immersive experience, and it'd probably make the live streams a lot cooler and like feel a lot more like real life too. I'm thinking of it not not so much from like my POV perspective. But more so if you're someone like Cupcake or Sword or Narvo and you're streaming it, it'd be just really, really cool to kind of go through a rundown of players and get everyone hyped just before the gate drops. Just, I'd, I'd be curious to know everybody else's thoughts. Uh, I imagine there'll be, it'll probably be a 50-50 split. Some people will be like, nah, hell, too much time and effort. And then some others might go, yeah, actually, really, really good idea. I'd, I'd like to implement that. As I've been sat here waffling as well, by the way, I think I've just been churning out like lap after lap without too many issues. But when I was flying around in the free roam camera before we started, I really thought this track would be more difficult than it is. I'm thinking of uh, Callum's last soundtrack that he released, which I think was Pine... Pine Creek, I want to say? I've done a couple of elimination races around there, and it's pretty pretty damn brutal, but it is fun once you get a flow going. Uh, I, this looked rougher when I was flying around the track. I'm not sure if I'm just having a, a semi-decent MX bike today, or if I'm just being a lot more, I guess, patient as we go around the track. Or maybe it's even this yammy being nice and consistent for me as well. It definitely doesn't feel the fastest bike in the world for me. I know it's very capable because I've seen some of the fast enablers using it recently. Um, but for me, it just seems like a very consistent bike. It doesn't kind of throw any issues my way. Suspension doesn't kick me at any point when I don't want it to. And it just, uh, it just does a very, very good job. And as you can see, I'm just kind of riding around the track on the, on the pegs as much as I can do don't have my control over actually so you can't see that unless you look at the little orange man at the bottom right remember when he's uh, when he's visible i'm stood up and when he disappears i'm sat down but yeah not really many places on this track where you need to sit down so uh, channel you're in a fin stand up everywhere that boy was barking at uh, trentino i was watching back up take stream on that absolutely insane get him out of the class get him moved up obviously it would be horrible to move him up halfway for a season but next season we need to stop him we need to stop this man from riding 250s because he's clearly uh, far superior to anybody else in that class no, not to disrespect anyone else in the class but you know when someone's just a, a league above everyone else at the moment that is uh, that is old Finn should not be winning by a minute against everybody else in a quote unquote pro race which also brings me to another little bit of a topic here which could be seen as a bit controversial and it's not meant to be by any means and I don't want to question the way that people run their series because it's not my series at the end of the day, it's theirs, they can do what they want. Um, but we've, we've had a little bit of uh, issues over the last few weeks of, uh, let's, uh, pro, let's say, amateurs running pro times in qualifying. And uh, a lot of time you can pull it down to, oh, they've had the track for a couple of hours longer, etc. But you still shouldn't be getting amateurs running near top pro lap pipes. In, it should never be the case. So one thing that I would like to see implemented, maybe not this year, because we're a bit deep at this point, it would ruin people's championships, so on and so forth. Um, but maybe for the outdoor season, instead of having like dedicated separate series between pro and ams, let people sign up for whatever they want, whether it's 250 or 450. Obviously, keep the region lock if you want to. Um, but then maybe implement a rule of maybe like a 107% rule. I think that's, is that what everyone calls it? Where if you're not within like a certain time limit of whoever else, you get disqualified, etc. It'd be nice to see, let's say, Cam set, say, one minute lap time. Uh, anybody like outside of a 10, or anybody within like a 107, for example, is then ineligible to do AMS. But I think that would just get rid of a lot of the uh, the top top AMS, if that makes sense. Get rid of some of the sandbaggers of... Damn, that is the first time in a long time that I've run out of uh, disk space whilst recording a video. Damn. I actually had to go and clear some space off, and I don't know how long it's uh, cut the recording off from. So yeah, just to summarise, in in, just in terms of uh, AMS and stuff, we could either introduce a 107% rule, where you kind of keep people in AMS if they're outside of a certain qualifying time each race. Or alternatively, one idea that gets thrown around is having one event, well, when I say one event, instead of having separate AMS and pro classes, just have one set of races, whether it's 450 or 250, and then everybody signs up, everybody does their qualifying, top 35 go through to pros, 36 through to 70th go into AMS. Now that could cause some issues uh, for like AMS point standings, but in my, there's no 
nice way of saying this because I mean every championship is meaningful to each individual person that wins one an AMS championship doesn't mean much if that makes sense it technically means you are the best of the rest rather than just the best so the way I would prefer to see it because I think the pro class should have all of the best riders in it like if you are the best amateur but you are still able to run pro times you should be in the pro class so what would be nice in my opinion is top 35 do pro second 35 do ams and if you're someone maybe that's leading an ams championship and then one round you don't score any ams points because you qualify for pro i would much rather see people be happy about scoring their first pro points than be happy about potentially winning an amateur championship does that make sense am i being i feel like that there's no nice way of wording that and I think whatever way I say it is going to get twisted and taken out of context a little bit but uh, I don't see the point in people intentionally riding an easier class for the sake of it being easier I think it's, it is a little bit sandbaggy and regardless of who you are if you are a genuine pro maybe if you even have one week where you qualify really really well but genuine AMS sorry and you have one week where you're, you're really vibing the track and you qualify first in AMS for example you're going to get a called sandbag on a matter of what. So you may as well just embrace it and uh, try and go into the into the pro race. And the only way you, that you improve in this game is by racing against faster people. That's certainly helped me. I mean, the amount of times that I'm riding on a track and qualifying, thinking that I'm doing really, really well, I've got all the lines dialed. I go into the qualifying server when it opens and I see people hitting completely different lines and I try them and it's like, oh, yeah, they are actually a lot faster. So it's, it depends on who you ride with. You're only going to improve by throwing yourself in at the deep end a little bit. And uh, I think so... Since I've just restarted recording now, I've been going for two and a half minutes. I was waffling for about ten minutes longer about this, so I can't remember what I said. I can't remember what I didn't say. I do apologise. That is the life of editing sometimes. Um, but all of that spiel aside, going to this track right now is a really, really fun track. It's not as challenging as I thought it would be. It really isn't. I thought, so looking at the map beforehand, I thought it would be so much more difficult than this. Um, but the sand rollers, they kind of all make sense. You know, on, on these rollers in, in the corners, you can just stand up and soak all of them up. Uh, the straights aren't too brutal you can kind of double and triple your way around here and there if you have enough uh, speed and you've got the line correct and overall just really really good fun and one that the uh, the dutch riders probably have a lot of fun riding on and yeah a good bit of uh, free practice as well for, for on next week uh, so before i love and leave you there is a slight chance obviously this is all very very early news it might not even come to fruition um but we heard what well, me and my girlfriend heard from a real estate agents today and uh, one of the landlords is, I guess, asking more questions about us for the, for the application process and tenancy. So there is a chance that within the next uh, couple of days we might have some more information on uh, me finally moving. Now if that does happen, I'm going to try my very very best to get a couple of days worth of videos pre-recorded. But if you see me absent on live streams again, which I know has been a common theme recently, then I will be moving my stuff from uh, one part of the country four hours away to the next part of the country. So uh, that is the reason why. And once we're all moved in and sorted, I will be on such a regular streaming routine. It's unreal because I won't have to take a break every, uh, well, once every three weeks, or once every four weeks. I can stream later into the night because I haven't got to keep anybody awake because my girlfriend could sleep through a robber breaking in. And it's all very, very exciting stuff. Like I said, it isn't 100% set in stone. Uh, I will wait to hear more information on it tomorrow, but it sounds very, very promising. So I know that streaming has not been great recently. I was away for a while, then I come back, and now I get ill, so I haven't been streaming again. And now there's a chance that finally when I start getting better again, I might be in the process of moving homes. I'm sorry. There, there will come a time where I will actually be a consistent YouTuber and do my job properly. Um, but thank you everyone so much for all the love and support recently. It's been great to see. And again, thank you for all the kind words on uh, yesterday's video about me being ill. We're getting there. I say it's still painful right now, but it's manageable. I can try and function more like a, a human being and I can actually eat some food, which is nice, rather than uh, having soup and ice cream yesterday so uh, i'm gonna love you and leave you if you did enjoy this video please do drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new it would be very much appreciated have a lovely rest of the day whatever you're up to catch you guys next time peace i'm working up. i'm sacrificing my life i'm sacrificing my mind i'm sacrificing my sanity but most importantly i'm sacrificing my time boy i feel fine i feel like i am a king honestly i can't complain even with faith that's the size of a grain of some salt i will still move a mountain and do what i want i got